Devlin, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Perfect. Let me show my screen. So let me welcome to Devlin Tuldulao. Devlin comes from Filipinas. Hi, Filipinas. Our best greetings from Switzerland. Right, Logan? Yes, indeed. My uh, fiance is uh, Pine Delvin. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I met her actually. And uh, we <laughs> met, uh, yeah, yeah. T I, I think that was two years ago in Singapore. With, uh, at uh, at John Limhap's event, most probably. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. we, uh, we met in Singapore, right? Yeah, Singapore's, it's a uh, summer in, uh, I think that yes, was the indeed. first monkey fest. Absolutely, yes, organized by then. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. amazing. So, Devlin is a Filipino full stack cloud engineer based in Norway. So, well, uh, I would say now you are in Philippines or in Norway? Oh, in, in Oslo. Oslo. Oh, wow. Now I'm based here. Yeah. So you are in our time zone. That's that's a lot uh -huh. better because now in Philippines it's like about two thirty a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Um, here we have Devlin, which is the Microsoft MVP and Auth CEO ambassador. I don't have an idea about what's that. A trainer, internal conference speaker, senior consultant. Well, uh, what are you not? That would be easier to explain. So we welcome you very much. It's an honor to have you in the house. Today, we will have you with the talk provision, your whole infrastructure resources using C Sharp. Uh, with you, Devlin Duldulao. Devlin Duldulao, the stage is yours. Thank you. Don't let me share my screen. I was disabled. Or is it? I think I was disabled. My sharing screen. I was disabled participants. Now, uh, uh, Devlin, uh, now you're yeah. a co host. Somehow you stop being that. Oh, okay. Now yeah, I think try, I try, try, try that again. Should be able to do that. Yep. Back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, yeah this uh, inviting me to uh, share my skills here. Uh, again, Devlin Dudelau, senior consultant here in, uh, in Meta, in Oslo. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I'm also a Terraform uh, associate uh, certified. So, okay. So, um, infrastructure uh, provisioning in the cloud can be, uh, say, a headache if you, don't, if you don't have the process or tools right. So here are, uh, are the list. So we have one here, uh, first manual, manually provision uh, infrastructure. Um, another one, um, no reliable record of what was deployed, uh, yeah, where or how things were configured. And the consequences, uh, consequences are we have here slow error prone deployments, rollbacks and scaling, uh, inability to improve extensive and uh, inefficient infrastructure for fear of you know, uh, breaking things. And uh, here another one, uh, complete reliance on a few system admins with working knowledge. And Another one here, difficulty uh, replicating the system for test and uh, staging environments leading to unreliable testing. And lastly here, another one, uh, no way to uh, snapshot and restore the system as a whole if sample uh, something goes uh, really bad or really wrong, right? And um, good news, we have a solution, you know, uh, I think that we started five years ago, um, four to five years ago. So we have orchestration here first. Uh, orchestration is, you know, automated deployments, 
callbacks and uh, scaling. And yeah, these are properties of, I would say, infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code is the way to uh, automate uh, provisioning the, using uh, a piece of code. So here's first. And we have here another one, immutable infrastructure. The current state of the infrastructure should not depend on the previous state. So meaning when you heard this uh, uh, immutable infrastructure, you don't update the, the your, your system or your, your servers, you, you just delete it and create another one, recreate things. So that's the meaning of immutable infrastructure. No updates, just recreate. So yeah, uh, infrastructure is code. The current state of the infrastructure is defined, defining uh, source control. So you have versioning and can be provisioned automatically from uh, the definition. There are a lot of uh, options here in IAC or infrastructure as code. But here we'll be uh, discussing um, an implementation in Purumi using C Sharp because we're .NET developers. We're used to writing code in C Sharp. So yeah, uh, why Purumi? Full power of real languages. Hmm? So you have C Sharp. You have you can you can try uh, TypeScript. You can try uh, Golang, Python, uh, it has control flow loops, of course. These are real programming language. Conditionals um, also has abstraction and reuse. You can, you can, uh, it, you can write a cleanly uh, um, yeah, piece of code or your, your, your infrastructure, functions, classes, packages, um, yeah, packages share and, and reuse everything. And yeah, and still declarative which is important. And in Pulumi, you can leverage existing tools, uh, communities and best practices. Uh, for example, your IDE, um, you, know, you can use Visual Studio or, or uh, JetBrains uh, IDEs. Uh, you can also uh, use your favorite uh, test frameworks. Right. And yeah, uh, in, in Pulumi, there are uh, online communities, training books, so yeah, easier for developers and infrastructure engineers to collaborate. So how to, uh, uh, how to use uh, Brewme? Um, if you're using a Mac, you just need to brew, install Brewme. Your Windows, you, know, you need Choco and then install uh, Brewme. These are easier uh, way of, of installing Brewme through CLI. But you can also uh, install manually, uh, you can download the exit file or inside file. From, uh, the website, and then you also need better way to uh, install a .NET Core 3.1 SDK or later, since you're dealing with .NET. So to create a project, um, you know, after installing the Plumi CLI, just write Plumi new, uh, then Azure C Sharp, so that's the pattern, so, and then Plumi up, um, do a prompt you better yes or no. Uh, okay, I think it's the best way to, to show you here is uh, real code and real uh, deployment. So, yeah. Hope you can see it. So let's start with Blue. Blue, me, and you, Azure. Sure. So, so yeah, enter a value or leave blank. Um, we we'll just go with the, the default name, demo, and then minimal Azure. That's just a description. And then stack. Okay, so you also uh, have an option here to decide uh, which uh, default location, Azure location to use. Here we have US, US. It's installing dependencies, building, and then after a few seconds, we are able to see. Yeah, here we go. Your new project is ready to go. See what's inside. 
So we're within that project folder. You just, you know, open a VS code here using insiders. Okay. Zoom in. Let's go uh, here one by one. We have an idea of what's inside of this Pulumi project for C Sharp developers. So this Pulumi YAML has your name of project one time. You see here .NET description and also has this Pulumi dev YAML. It's just a uh, location. Let's close this. Um, what else? Let's check out this uh, CS Proj. See here, Microsoft.NET SDK, .NET Core 3.1, and the NuGet package that is uh, included here out of the box, the Pulumi, that does work, the version. And what about this one, MyStack? So here, uh, there's a default here, default uh, resource that you'll be uh, uh, creating once you run the Plumi app. So here, just you know, very simple resource uh, resource group and with an account uh, storage, resource storage account. You see. And that's it. And here's an output and an attribute output. Uh, just to, you know, this actually for user for the developer for, for, for the uh, for the IT pro so you can see the connection string here once uh, um, the storage count is being created so let's open up the terminal and lastly let's see what's inside of this program let's see yes so the this this is static main here is actually uh, basically it's gonna call this run async my stack, which is in the other file, right? So you can try that. And command will be just gloomy up. And another requirement here, you need to uh, log in. Azure CI before you run this because it will start sending uh, API requests to Azure ARM service. You're still scanning. It's checking if you have a previous deployment there or provision in Azure sources. And if you're gonna ask me if there's a state here, like in uh, um, the other uh, IEC, yes. So the state, by the way, uh, it it tracks the changes you know that have been made in in uh, your resources, or will be you know deleting, or let's say uh, will be uh, uh, created. So here, there's a question: Do you want to perform this update and uh, it's like uh, a version control, git, you have here this icon plus, meaning it will be added or, or it will be created. So room stack, resource group, and storage count. So resources, three will be created. You can go here, details, or just straight to yes. So let's try yes. I'm sending another batch of requests to um, my Azure account. And then after a few minutes, we'll see here. It's already here. Refresh. Oh. Still creating. It's almost done. So you see here Azure Core Resource Group and for the storage account. So 
So similar with, let's say, with, with Terraform. Okay. Probably it's already here. I just need to refresh. Can I think of, of any, any resources faster than storage account or resource group? Oh, here we go. So as so you can see, this is now put. Uh, yep, here it is. Um, let's see, jump back here. So output is just, you know, to help us see what's been created. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Here it is. So the name would be storage 61C9. Fresh. Sometimes there's a play. Resource group, yep, seven, seven, five. Let's see what's inside of this. This is group. Yep, here's the storage account. Yeah, perfect. Uh, okay. So, uh, any questions? Have any questions here regarding uh, you know what what uh, what are the possibilities of of this? Or any any you can think of any use case. So yeah, if if you're if you have experience uh, using ARM templates and purchase this, uh, it's up to you know um, JSON. So in in Azure ARM, we'll be working with, with JSON files, and this one with C sharp. Um, it's a matter of preference, but you know, you, you can you can tell right. It, uh, it's, it's 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 readable than than, than JSON, than JSON uh, uh, files here or JSON objects, and writing or, or calling uh, a method from from another class is is uh, more readable here in the import teams than uh, dealing with uh, JSON objects like referencing and then importing. So, yeah. And the team of Pulumi, I heard that they're still, uh, you know, uh, putting a lot of uh, uh, effort to, uh, as much as possible, match the, what's existing in the launch template of the, the APIs. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Let me back to the slides. The demo. So basically, it's the same. Okay. So, uh, yeah, to get started, uh, you can go straight here. Let me get on to get started. And then Azure. Just to try it out. Um, you you know, have 30 we, seconds, Zeppelin. Yeah, uh, try it out. Uh, just you know, don't forget to to delete uh, the resources you created, especially if you're you're uh, spinning up uh, some some servers. Because uh, I think uh, I think last month I forgot to delete uh, one one instance in in uh, in AWS, <laughs> and it cost me fifty bucks. <laughs> so lesson learned. Lesson learned. Yeah. Something I I forgot. You know, I think I I did a demo and then forgot to. to yeah, which reminds me, <laughs> we forgot to delete that <laughs> Pulumi again. So here we go again. So yeah, to delete that, uh, just need to Pulumi destroy. Oh my God, this is gonna happen. No, no way, man. Yeah. So yeah, and then just go yes. So it will, you know, delete the um, uh, um, resource you just created. <laughs> Almost, almost. Uh, Evelyn, thank you so much 